All right, joining me once again here on the Matthew Filipovich Show is my good friend Shannon Moore. Shannon is, of course, a native Alaskan and the host of the Shannon Moore Show, which you can find at shannonmoore.com. You can also find her on Twitter at Shannon Moore, and that's Shannon with a Y. Shannon, thank you so much for being on the show again. Oh, it's my pleasure. Nice to talk to you again. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Uh, So, Shannon, a story that, in my opinion, has not gotten nearly the amount of attention it deserves in the last week, week and a half, is the grounding of a shell oil drilling rig near Kodiak, Alaska. If people haven't heard, let's just start at the beginning. What exactly happened with this rig? Well, I don't know how far you want me to go back, but I'll just say that for decades, even the Bush administration wouldn't okay offshore drilling in the Arctic. Um, the Chukchi and Beaufort Seas are 2,000 miles from Kodiak Island by by nautical miles, by you know sea, and so they're pretty far away from the Coast Guard. Let's just put it that way, and you wouldn't expect. They're, this where they were supposed to be drilling, or where they've been given leases by the Obama administration. I mean, you, it would be like if you said to Kodiak Island, "We want you to be monitoring uh, the coast of California." Oh, right. It would actually be. I mean, Seattle's only fourteen hundred miles away. So, I mean, it's 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 so vast, it's so big. So it was really insane that they got these anyway. As far as a safety issue, they've had screw up after screw up. Um, and they just haven't had their act together. And this was the latest installment. I mean, I mean things like their containment cap that they tested. As soon as it got to 200 feet, it collapsed like a beer can. With a 20 foot high metal structure collapse, it just crushed itself under the pressure. Um, their oil spill containment barge was not up to specs. And when it wasn't up to specs, they negotiated with with the government and said, can you lower the specs? We would like this to only be seaworthy to 20, 20 foot seas. And the government um, accepted, the, the, the government accepted that, that yeah, negotiation. Cause, because wow. the Obama administration has been terrified of looking anti development, right? Mm-hmm. So, so they lowered the specs. Well, these were 40 foot seas and you can lower the specs and you can make a deal with the government, but you can't with mother nature. Their oil spill containment barge was still sitting in Bellingham, Washington, and they got fined for, get this, spilling hydraulic fluid into the harbor. Wow. So clearly not doing its job. So there's been all of these different things. Well, in in this instance, um, the state of Alaska has a, a 20 mil tax that goes on the first of the year if you're sitting in the harbor. And... It appears that there was a bean counter decision of we don't want to spend eight million dollars or you know whatever the it looks like that's about how much it would have been between six and eight million dollars. So let's get that thing out of the harbor. Let's go. And they passed all the deadliest catch boats who were tied to the dock because guess what? There was a hurricane coming, <laughs> hundred mile an hour wind, forty foot seas. I mean, I talked to a couple of people who were like, yeah. The, the waves were four stories high, and they were they decided to go out in that stuff. Wow. So they took this horrible risk, and they tore loose from their tug. It's just, and, and the rig itself, Matt, is, it's hard to believe how big it is, even from the pictures. But, okay, you can think how big the Titanic was, right? Uh-huh. This rig draws more water, meaning it needs more water not to run ashore, than the Titanic by four or five feet. The Titanic weighed 48,000 gross tons. This thing weighed 20, it weighs 28,000 gross tons. So it's, it's, it's a huge, huge piece of equipment. It's worth hundreds of millions of dollars. And to avoid some taxes, they were like, hey, let's, let's go sweet talk mother nature here for a little bit. (laughs) <laughs> and and the island that it washed up on, um, just southeast of Kodiak, um, is is really hallowed grounds for the Aleut people and for a lot of Alaskans. When um when the Russians first came to Alaska, uh, that was one of the places they stopped, and they they massacred the people there. They ran them off the cliffs, 
And those cliffs that you'd see in the pictures with this oil rig, you know, bashing around in this giant surf, those cliffs, people picked up their children and jumped off of to avoid being murdered by the Russians. So it's sort of this hallowed ground, sacred place. It's, it, it, and um, there, there just seemed to be this complete lack of sensitivity on the part of this foreign-owned oil company when it came to how to deal with Alaska and how important this actually was. I think, I think the, the thing, do you remember, oh my gosh, do you remember um, was it Hayward who said, after the BP story, he's like, I just want to get my life back? Uh-huh, yeah. <laughs> well, there, was, there was a statement sort of like that, which was, we want to get this off the front pages. And it was like, why don't you get it off the rocks first? <laughs> right, I, 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 you know, my, my, my jaw just, just drops when we're talking about this. And again, I'm talking to my, my good friend Shannon Moore. I, it, it is the most. I, there, there's a lot of, there's a lot of betrayals, in my opinion, uh, from President Obama. You know, one, I think the civil liberties thing is is, is chief among them. I, I think the environment is 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 definitely, you know, right up there. Uh, and and how. I mean, look, look, look really, because because President Obama's policy on drilling is essentially Sarah Palin's, isn't it? It pretty much is just drill, baby, drill. That is that is the policy that Barack Obama has embraced. I mean, it's more drilling than it's, than, it's than any than, Republican president. It's more than Palin ever dreamed of, and it's more than Dick Cheney and George Bush even ever tried. Wow. Ever tried, because here was the whole thing is that, you know, the environmentalists, God forbid, would have all set their hair on fire if... George Bush would have tried this, but they were all like, I don't know, worried about gays being in the military or Mitt Romney coming in or whatever. And there is this ridiculousness of any time that you say something about the president regarding civil liberties or Guantanamo Bay or, or, you know, drones. Mm -hmm. If you talk about that, people go, you're an emo prod. (laughs) <laughs> or you're, what do you, you want Mitt Romney to win? It's like, are you on crack? No. <laughs> but guess what? It's like, everybody knows who's ever been, in a, you know, married is, you don't get married and then go, okay, you're perfect. <laughs> don't worry about those socks on the floor. I got them, honey. And would you like meatloaf? Nobody does that. So here we have this, you know, short term, eight year now, now eight year marriage to this president. And, I'll be damned if I'm not going to say, are you insane? Pick up your socks. And by the way, drilling the Arctic, bad idea. This is how crazy it is. And it's been, and you know, for everything we export from Alaska, we can't seem to export these issues. But Lloyd's of London last year, Lloyd's of London who insures all kinds of things, right? right. I mean, Michael Flatley's legs are insured by them. <laughs> yes, Michael Flatley. I know. I want you. I, next time I see you, I want to see you give me some Lord of the Dance. But, I could do that. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, they're okay. So they they insure. They're kind of the end of the road for you to get insurance. Like they'll insure huge, crazy things, right? Well, they decided last year that they would insure the Freedom Tower because what could go wrong, right? <laughs> the Freedom right. Tower replacing the World Trade Centers in in New York. The side of nine eleven, a horrible, horrible day. And so they were like, you know what, we're going to bet on that. We're going to bet that terrorists aren't ever going to again, you know, get through a TSA line, by God. And, have and some- try to strike at this, at this symbol of defiance of 9-11. We're, not, we're, we're, we're fine insuring that, exactly. is what they're saying. And, and then, by yeah. the way, it was bombed, you know, and during the Clinton administration with a truck. It was bombed by airplanes. We're going to bet that that's a, a safe deal. And then... They turned around and this is what they said. We will not ensure drilling in the Arctic because that environment is so precarious. More than anywhere else on Earth, that environment is too precarious. So we're not going to ensure that. Lloyds of London said that. And then Ken Salazar came out and he says, of course, he's the Secretary of the Interior. He goes out and he says, Well, when he was asked about what could go wrong up there, you know, what's the oil spill response? His response was this, I quote, I don't believe there's going to be an oil spill. 
Well, there you go, Shannon. I mean, like, if he doesn't believe it, clearly we're fine. I mean, like that, like that, that should put all this to rest. In fact, I think that quote really means that this, 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 the, 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 the grounding of this rig didn't actually happen. We're probably just hallucinating, hallucinating the whole thing, right? Well, it was like that is a birth control policy of Bristol Palin. <laughs>